Let's get you into your 12 hour planner for today. We're already seeing some rain and some heavier spots right now in West Alabama, so our timeline already kicking up our potential for severe storms lies between 10 o'clock this morning and 3 o'clock this afternoon for central Alabama as a whole. So it's already moving into West Alabama through 10 a.m. We think some of the heavier spots in I-65 in Jefferson County will probably be between about 12 and 2 o'clock this afternoon and then moving into East Alabama by about 3 or 4 o'clock. And that's when we will see intermittent rain overnight tonight, but the severe weather aspect will be lowered at that point. So right now there are no active watches or warnings warnings for central Alabama. But once we zoom out and look at the bigger picture, you can see there's still a great deal of heavy rainfall right now across Mississippi. That's going to be moving in, but no active watches or warnings right now for this cluster of heavy downpours and thunderstorms. And that's mainly because the severe weather at this hour is located along the warm front. The warm front and this system as it converges into central Alabama, that's going to deliver our severe weather risk, but really all the elements are more likely to produce tornadoes in extreme southeast Alabama. We're talking about Enterprise, Alabama, Dothan, Alabama, and then moving more into southern uh, Georgia, Americus, Georgia, uh, possibly into Savannah, Georgia and Brunswick, Georgia, and then the Big Bend region of Florida. So that's what we're talking about where the tornado watch is right now. We're going to be on the weather watch all day long for you, but we think our primary hazards with these storms today will be damaging winds and hail. There is still a possibility for a brief spin up here in central Alabama and and then of course flash flooding because we're going to be inundated with rain. So here's our severe weather risk for today just to give you some perspective here. So I-65 and southbound into Jefferson County into Montgomery, we have a slight risk category. So we're right in the lower end, right in the central portion here in the lower end of the scale. Slight risk meaning uh, scattered severe storms are possible. They could be short lived, but they could be intense as well. Damaging winds and one to two inch hail in diameter. Then we look in to extreme southeast Alabama. The Storm Prediction Center now upgrading that threat to a high risk. That's on the extreme high end of the severe weather threat. That includes Americas and pushing into Thomasville, Georgia. But areas like Winston and Walker counties and Fayette counties, we have a marginal risk for strong storms for today. So no matter how you slice it, we're going to get a lot of heavy rain. We're going to get some gusty winds and possibly some hail as well. As we look at your seven day forecast, the rain will move in into your Monday, a break on Tuesday, cooler air as we wrap up the work week in the upcoming week. Live shot now from the Tuscaloosa skyline. You can see the lightning right now lighting up the sky over Bryant Denny Stadium. Raindrops on the camera lens, heavy downpours right now in Tuscaloosa County. We're also hearing rumbles of thunder atop of Red Mountain. It is miserable out there this morning. We're going to talk about radar first. Right now, the heaviest rainfall, the rumbles of thunder just vibrating the building right now across the Magic City, Western Jefferson County, Pleasant Grove, Oak Grove, Birmingham, also Mulga. This is where we're seeing some heavy rainfall, Pratt City as well into Birmingham up to Village Creek. All of this heavy rainfall, no watches, no warnings right now for Jefferson County. The majority of the severe weather is to our south, but that doesn't negate from the fact that we have heavy rainfall. Anniston, Oxford, rainfall rates potentially even two to three inches an hour. So that's blinding rain. Would it, I would definitely avoid that I-20 uh, I stretch of roadway from Heflin through Anniston and into Pell City. Still monitoring the situation, Calera and Clanton down I-65 southward and then to the uh, west of I-65 because these storms right now that we see just to the south of Brent, just to the south of Bibb County, they have a history of producing tornadic cells. There has also been reports of trees down and also uh, a church has been uh, damaged in Marengo County and that's to our south and west Marengo County southwestern Alabama counties but just to the south of Bibb County just to the south of Tuscaloosa County so that's why we're on the weather watch for you heaviest rainfall remains from West Jefferson to Jasper to Tuscaloosa but we still have these heavy rain bands along a squall line that's tracking more eastward we'll talk more about this coming up in just a bit a little bit warmer today, but we're still going to cool down very quickly because that air is so dry. Humidity levels less than 25%. Extremely dry air continues for tonight. Those temperatures get quite cool. We'll start with the visible satellite radar, the view from space, because it does show a good amount of cloud cover and a front right now through the Midwest 
into areas of Oklahoma City. Check out this temperature disparity though. We're talking 70s right now in St. Louis and then 50s once we move into Omaha. So you can really see a significant change here in the temperatures once that cold front pushes through. That's going to be our next big weather maker later this week. So we still have the drought and the high fire danger. Humidity levels will bump up just a bit into Friday and Saturday as that front approaches, but we still want to do our part and try to participate in water conservation. Anything you can do just turning off the water while you brush your teeth. Any little bit of uh, watering advice for you. Uh, watering, of course, when the humidity levels are at highest, that means after the sun goes down and right before the sun comes up. So watering at night, if you can uh, hold off on doing that, that would be fantastic as well. So the front looks to be right around 2059 by tomorrow morning, bringing us cloud cover, bringing us breezy conditions and also a little bit more moisture. So it's going to up that moisture, which will decrease the fire danger slightly but we have enough dry brush that you just want to be very cautious. Temperatures tonight around 55 degrees and in the seven day forecast, we look ahead to a few more warm days. It will feel a little warmer in the sunshine. Keep that in mind. If you're in the direct sunshine, it will probably feel more like the mid to upper 80s. A little cooler for your weekend as that front passes through and only minimal rain chances as that front moves through. Most of us will just see the clouds. and even colder weather expected into tomorrow morning. So we have another freeze warning for early Monday morning, remaining very dry in your forecast. So even as a front starts to track across the nation, that's going to impede some travelers around the Southern Plains in the midsection of the country, potentially the Midwest or the Ohio Valley. But once that front hits the deep south, we're talking about hit and miss showers as it swings through. So when it does by Wednesday and then we get into Thanksgiving Thursday, it'll be decent out there. Cloud cover about 50 for your morning cooking. A little midday dinner feels great with low 60s. Same goes for that afternoon nap. If you're going to cozy up, opening up the windows, letting some fresh air in. Always a great day for that. 56. That's your forecast high temperature. Yeah, that's your high. We are below average for highs and for lows. 29 degrees your temperature for tonight. Your seven day forecast Today will be one of the coolest days you'll feel over the next seven days. We gradually get warmer out ahead of that front that moves in midweek and then Thanksgiving Day clearing out and cooling down just in time for Black Friday sales.